Now then, people, it's Joe, it's All Leeds TV, and it's time for another opposition preview. And with me, I've got Dia from the Back of the Nest podcast. How are you, brother? All right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Right. So, Crystal Palace then at weekend, Saturday, 3 p.m. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts? Just what are your general thoughts ahead of this game? How are you feeling ahead of it, man? I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling nervous because I know what Leeds can do and I know what Palace can do as well under Roy Hodgson. And I'm expecting a very difficult game. I know the talent that you guys have got. It's not... I've said this on our channel as well. I don't think the talent difference is massively significant, but I think the manager, both managers, that, I think that's the changing point. you got mm. Bielsa, who's going to be playing a... He's going to be playing football and we've got Roy Hodgson who's going to be sitting back. So I feel yeah. like that's going to be too much for Palace. And I think we, we'll, we'll be struggling. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a certain clash of styles between the between the two managers, isn't it? Um, but look, I mean, the way we, we played against Leicester, um, I know you might not be able to catch the game, but mm. we can be caught on the counter-attack. And, and with someone like Zaha, um, it's some someone we need to be aware of. Just, just on, obviously, when I think of Crystal Palace, I think of Wilf Zaha. Is, mm. is there anyone else that, that we need to be aware of from a, from a Palace perspective? Especially if you guys are getting caught on the counter, I'll say Jeffrey Slup because of his pace. He's got a massive pace on the left-hand side. And then either Van Aan or, or Mitch will start depending on who's fit. So down the left-hand side, we've got good amount of pace where on the counter-attack, we might be able to cause trouble. So I'll say the likes of Van Aan or um, Jeffrey Slup. And then in midfield, Jairo Riedewald, who hasn't had that much game time. But lately, Roy Hodgson has actually given him the game time that he deserves and he's been performing well he's been holding it down in midfield picking up passes um following the midfielders trying to um you know cut um all them passes as well so he's a decent player Jared read the world but mainly i'll say i wouldn't pick out an individual player after zaha i'll just say the left hand side that's where yeah. maybe Leeds should focus on to um you know stop the counter-attack from palace with the pace that we got Good times. Um, I, I know, obviously, you've not mentioned him there, but during our time in the t championship, obviously, we came up against Eberichi Ezie a few times, um, mm. you know, and Calvin Phillips actually said um, he was the one person that gave him the toughest game over the two games. You know, we, we I know uh, Eberichi Ezie can do bits. What have you made about his, you know, adjustment to Premier League football? Joe, it hurts me, but I can't I can't talk about Eze because he doesn't get game time under Roy Hodgson. Really? You would think, yeah, you would he's this is this is a type of manager that we've got. Um look, he's done a great job of keeping us up, but he's got his favourites as well. And we play a 4-4-2 system, and Eze just, you know, he's not wide midfielder. He hasn't got the pace like Jeffrey Schluck to hit teams on a counter-attack. So he doesn't really fit our style of football, but the fact that you said that Calvin Phillips said he's one of the hardest oppositions that he's faced, it hurts me because we know as Palace fans and we were excited when we first got him because he's got massive potential and talent right now. But mm. we can't see the best out of him if he doesn't start games and if he's played out of position. So he came on against Wolves in the last game, done pretty um, well because, you know, Wolves were just sitting back after they scored the second goal. But overall, I'll be honest with you, he's looked fantastic when he has played. He's looked very good and looked skillful but he hasn't had enough game time. And I'm worried that he's not going to have enough game time this season because Roy Hodgson wants you to be as well defensively as you were attacking. And Eze, he's still not there in terms of going back and tracking back. But he's not that type of player, is he? So mm. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's a hard one. But hopefully he'll get more consistent game time. But it's, yeah, it just his defensive work is a bit concerning. Yeah, it's a real surprise because, like you say, he's a, he's a real top talent. Like he's him, the likes of Ben Rama, who's just gone to West Ham, Bowen at, at West Ham. There's some real, real decent talent down there. So, and it was was it only twenty million you paid for him as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's only twenty million yeah. pound. And we, the whole summer we're doing a marketing. You know, um, as a twenty five, he's our next star. But then again. Um, he's not playing, and I, I have right, the just feeling, doesn't play him. yeah, he, he, he doesn't play him. And then you have the situation at Palace where you don't know if if the board are backing and managing enough, and then you don't know if the board are doing the right thing. Because at the end of the day, if if we're getting players like Eze and Roy's not starting him, what is the point of splashing twenty five yeah. to thirty million pound on another player when you can keep that money and spend it when your next manager comes in? Hopefully, at the end of the season. So mm. it's it's a difficult time to be a Palace fan, you know. As I said in, in our channel, seven to eight years in the Premier League. And right now, my only focus is that 17th and above. I just want to stay up. It just shows how dull it can be at times. But, mm. you know, we're Palace fans. We've had lots of ups and downs. And 
going to this game, <laughs> we've got low expectation with all due respect against Leeds, who just got promoted. And you would expect a team that's yeah. been in the Premier League for so long to at least be favourites going into this game. Yeah, one hundred percent. I would agree with you. You know, that's the thing is, uh, and uh, and I suppose it it shows how lucky we are as a football club at the moment that we have Bielsa um, and and that a team that's uh, you know uh, a fully you know um, established Premier League team and not feeling confident against a team that's just come come up from uh, you, you know the Championship. And um, we spoke on your channel and I mentioned it briefly. We do a bit of a, a review show, and I remember the other week um, when you got a result. Was it one nil? What was your most recent win? Uh, most recent win was Fulham two one. Two one. That was it. Sorry, and you had like the most possession you'd had all season. It was only like thirty six percent or something. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we, <laughs> we managed. Yeah, yeah, that was that Fulham game. But the last game that we lost, we managed to beat that, and that was fifty five percent possession. And right. Pies fans were talking about dominating it, and that's where we are right now. Fifty five percent possession. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we are right now as a club. <laughs> but that's the thing, and that's because the Wolves just sat back. No, honestly, they were two new up. They knew mm. that if they just sit back and just make sure yeah. they stop Zaha and our left-hand side, then they'll be fine. And that's what they're done. But yeah, we don't keep the ball. We really don't. We mm. just sit back and we sat back against Fulham. We're going to sit back against Leeds and hope that on a counter-attack, their space is open, that Palace can go and, you know, um, attack. But it is, you know, you just look at the squad that we got. We've, we've, we haven't got a bad squad. And you're just like, can these players do a bit more if you allow them the freedom and give them the yeah. opportunities? I really do believe that. But some Palace fans don't. And you know what? In a way, I don't blame them because we've seen this football for now two to three years. And it can be soul destroying for players and for fans mm -hmm. because you don't know what to expect from these players if they've never really played football, attacking yeah. football. And we haven't for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. And I always say this to the younger generation that watch our channel, you know, you're hearing Dia there talking about a team that have been in the Premier League for eight years and he's, it's dull football, you know. These these young ones, like, enjoy the moment because we're so lucky at the moment to have Bielsa, you know. You hear Dia there, you know, there will come a time when he moves on and we might have to adopt a style of play to just stay in the division. And, you know, it's not what I want. We're so lucky right now. But what what have you made of your season so far then, uh, Dia? And what, what are your thoughts for the for the season, you know, for the rest of it? Yeah. So, as I said before, my expectations for this season are just 17th and above because I know that we're inconsistent in results. We'll get a couple wins, then we'll lose a couple of games. Like, I just want us to stay up. That's all. I don't mm. expect anything under Roy Hodgson. And the season so far, we managed to get a result against Southampton and Manchester United. But then you're looking at United and you're like, is that result even significant because of where they are in the league? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not. Uh, yeah, so we managed to get results against them, struggled against Everton. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a typical Palace season where we don't keep the ball, we just sit back and we've got players on the bench who we think that should be starting that are not starting. Yeah. And just expectation for so far this season, you'll say it's, it's all right because we're on points with you guys, which sounds crazy, mm. um, but goal difference separating us. But it's been an all right season so far, but my expectation going on is just hoping and praying that we just stay up in the Premier League. Um, and I feel like we will do because Roy Hodgson, as dull as the football can be, is a good defensive coach and will manage to pick out results, as I said, here and there. Yeah. I mean, you spoke about that, us being in the same position, same points and stuff. It's just the madness of the Premier League right now because if we'd have won last night, we'd have gone to third. We've lost mm. and we've dropped all the way down to 12th. So it's a bit, um, there's loads of inconsistency at the minute in the early stages of the Premier League. Um, you've touched on, obviously, you know, Zaha, obviously the danger man, that left hand side. What are your, what are your thoughts on, on Leeds United? Who do you see as their key, key men in this game? You know what? In Leeds, I, I don't pick out a single person. Mm. As you said, when we're talking about it, I don't I don't think you've got a great individual squad, like in terms mm. of players. You've got solid players, but then players are playing like this under Bielsa. And that's why I pick out Leeds as a team. And I'm mm. worried about I'm worried about the tactics. I'm worried about the pressing that you're going to do. So in terms of players, one player that I sh I should maybe mention is Patrick Bamford. And it's mm. not because he's your great, he's your best player in the team, but we know that he we know what he done at Palace and he's probably got a point to prove as well in this game yeah. where he wants to score a goal because Palace fans were a bit harsh at him. He just came, I think he was 22, 23 years old, was struggling massively. The best thing he was doing on the pitch was touching his hair. And um yeah, so I would I would 
you know, I'll be worried about Bamford because I feel like he's got points through. But apart from that, as I said, I just feel like your team as a whole and the way that you set up, that's what worries me rather than the players itself. Yeah, yeah, no, I I understand that. And I, I can, you know, sort of agree with what you're saying. You know, it is about the, the team rather than the individuals at Leeds United. But what happened with Patrick Bamford then at Palace? Did he get, did he get much game time? Was it just a, a real reluctance for the manager to play him? Who was in charge at the time? Who was in charge? I think it was Pardew. I think it was yeah, Pardew. Yeah, which, I think it was. Which, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Which, yeah, I think it was Pardew. And what I can remember, I was actually very excited when we did first get him because he was a young player. He was at Borough. He scored, you know... It was the player of the and, season. Player of the season yeah. that season in the Championship. Y yeah, so I was excited. I was like, he's going to step up to the Premier League. Uh, you know, we need a striker, so why not? But then it just didn't quite work out. Mm. I was, I don't know why, but the only thing I can remember about Bamford in the Premier League was him just standing still. I don't know if he's still got the spiky hair, but him just brushing his hair backwards, that's all I can remember. <laughs> and it just didn't work. It just, it just didn't work out for him. And it's just unfortunate in a way because I was I had high expectations for him. I think Palace fans did. But, you know, it's it's one of the things, but maybe he was in the right place at the right time. Now he's he's at Leeds. He's grown up a bit more. He's five years gone by, which sounds crazy. But, mm. um he just didn't have maybe consistent minutes. And when he did play, he just seemed a bit lost. He didn't know what to do. Whether that was down to the manager, I'm not too sure. But I feel like a bit of growing up um, yeah. in terms of um, what he's done at Leeds as well and other clubs before he joined Leeds. And also your manager, I feel like that's a perfect combination for him. And that's why we're seeing him score goals now in the mm. Premier League. Yeah, good, good. And I, I like that you, you think you might have a point to prove. Hopefully you'll have the bit between the teeth and get a couple of goals on there on, on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just on that, how, how do you see the game going? What What's your, your thoughts in terms of result-wise uh, on the weekend? So I, I said it, um, I think, on our channel. I think it'll be a 2-1 Leeds. I don't. I just don't see it working out for Palace. But then again, you mentioned on counter-attack, you struggled against mm. Leicester, against Jamie Vardy and likes of... I don't think we've got Jamie Vardy type of pace players in our team, but we are meant to be this good counter-attacking team. Yeah. So if we can find spaces in behind, I feel like we can get a goal. However, throughout the game, because of us just sitting back and whenever we get the ball, we're not used to dealing with pressure. Um, that we're going to deal with under Leeds because of the man marking and, you know, mm. and a high intensity. I feel like we're going to struggle and Leeds are going to start the game off strongly. And I think it'll be an early, just like the Wolves game where they pressured us with their fullbacks and their pressuring just in general. I think Leeds are just going to start the game good and they're going to score early goals and we're just going to struggle to get into, into it. But hopefully we got we get a goal to celebrate at Palace because, yeah, we haven't scored that many this season. So mm. I guess that'll be a positive. Yeah, <laughs> um, I mean, Leeds fans will be taking massive confidence from this. Maybe we'll get a little bit overconfident, but yeah, I can see a positive result for Leeds at the weekend. Uh, fingers crossed, anyway. And what what will we expect lineup wise? Who will be lining up for Palace on the weekend, dear? So my lineup is it will be Vicente Guaita, and then a centre back. You would assume it will be Cheku Kuyate, and I'm not too sure if Roy will change it, but it might be still it, it might still be Scott Dan or Gary Cahill might come back in the side. At left back, I expect Patrick Van Arnold to start again. At right back, it's going to be Nathaniel Klein. Um, and then in midfield, it'll be Jairo Reedworld and James McArthur. He'll come in for um, Luka Milivojevic, who got a red card against Wolves. Left-hand side, Slut. Right-hand side of midfield, Andros Townsend, Batshuayi and Zaha up front. Typical 4-4-2 four, four, um, formation. Nothing mm. exciting. Um, but, yeah. Nice, nice. So, uh, where can we, where can we uh, find you, dear? Yeah, at Back of the Nest, uh, YouTube channel, um, you came along. So if Leeds fans want to see your perspective on the game, head over there. But yeah, Back of the Nest YouTube channel. And you can also follow us on Back of the Nest. And um, if you want Palace Ramblings, follow me, I guess. But I guess you wouldn't want that as a Leeds fan. So. <laughs> it depends on the result, mate. If we if it's a positive yeah. result for Leeds, they might come over and have a listen to what you have to say. You know what it's like. Um, but yeah. I'll, put, I'll put the Back of the Nest details in the comments. But thank you so much for coming on, guys. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Thank you, dear. Cheers, bro.